Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, who was the ninth sister? Well, when we look at the Inquisitors, it's always a challenge to uncover the hidden pasts of each of their members. After all, Emperor Palpatine went through great lengths to conceal the fact that his secret order of Jedi Hunters were once Jedi themselves. But unlike many of her brothers and sisters, Ninth Sister's origins aren't entirely shrouded in mystery. For the likes of the Powan leader, the Grand Inquisitor, and other powerful duelists like Fifth Brother, we only know of their titles. Whatever name they had as youths in the Jedi temples was lost long ago. But Ninth Sister is different. We know that she was once known as Masana Tide, and she was a powerful member of the Daoutan species. Like most other Inquisitors, Tide had once been a member of the Jedi Order. But long before she ever studied the ways of the Force, Masana must have lived a simple life, somewhere in the core worlds. Her species' home planet was a tiny frozen sphere of ice and snowstorms, right on the edge of the unknown regions. That world, Dout, from which her people took their name, was one of the most unremarkable planets in the region. Besides giving rise to the powerful Dawutans, many of whom would go on to become skilled Jedi and terrifying gladiatorial champions in underworld arenas, Dawut was a forgettable, frozen landscape. Perhaps it was that environment that caused the Dawutans to be so individualistic. Unlike other powerful aliens, like the Wookiees of Kashyyyk, or the Lasat of Lasan, the Dawutans preferred to live on their own, and they didn't have complex social hierarchies that they needed to navigate on a daily basis. By the time Masana took the title of Inquisitor, she showed no signs that her Dawutan heritage even played a role in her identity. If you just took a glance at her, you'd know about as much as you'd need to. Based on her lightsaber dueling skills, she was obviously a former Jedi. That much was true. Like the Grand Inquisitor, Fifth Brother, and almost everyone from the New Order of Inquisitorius, Tide had once studied the Force in the same building as Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Although she didn't achieve the same type of unusual success that the other two Jedi had, Masana was still quite accomplished. Dawutans were a rare sight in the temple, and there's no doubt that Tide's natural physical traits would have made her a commanding presence in the sparring halls. After the execution of Order 66, Tide was recruited by Palpatine and tortured until she accepted the dark side and Darth Sidious's will. At that time, she, along with the rest of the Inquisitors, thought they were a special unit that had a unique bond with their new emperor. But when Darth Vader returned from a mission to create his own lightsaber, Ninth Sister discovered that she, in fact, was further down the pecking order than she first thought. After Vader defeated the Grand Inquisitor in a duel in the Jedi Library, Sidious awarded his apprentice command over the Inquisitorius, which naturally made Ninth Sister his subordinate. On their first day of sparring with their new commander, Vader made a point to show just how superior he was, in comparison to Tide and her dark Jedi peers. With crazy accuracy, Vader deftly carved through each and every one of his new soldiers in different ways, hacking away hands, legs, and even eyes in the process. Vader claimed that he was teaching his new Inquisitors the value of loss, and Ninth Sister's particular lesson was achieved when Vader traced the tip of his crimson lightsaber through her eye. That brutal mutilation scarred Tide forever, and when she later joined Vader on his missions across the galaxy, she would occasionally allow the Sith Lord to enter into one-sided battles of his own, and then refuse to offer assistance in the hopes that Vader's enemies would kill him. She clearly still held a grudge. Sometime after Vader took over command of the Inquisitorius, a report of a Force user in a cantina on the nearly barren world of Cabaria made its way back to Coruscant. Although Ninth Sister typically handled those types of investigations on her own, Vader decided to join her. Usually, the Inquisitor would have questioned her commander's motives for such an unusual decision, and Tide certainly did, but her conclusion was different than she suspected. At first, she must have feared for her own life, since Vader was infamous for killing clone troopers and other Imperial officers for almost no reason at all. But after using her old Jedi abilities to know that Vader was there, 
Ninth Sister discovered that Vader was becoming restless, with the increasing rarity of Jedi sightings, and he just wanted some good old-fashioned Jedi killing fun. The mission to Kabaria turned out to be a ruse, and the reports of a Jedi in the sector were simply a lure to attract Vader into an ambush. Although the Sith Lord first suspected Ninth Sister had betrayed him, Vader later discovered that, in fact, a group of Imperial officers were behind the failed assassination attempt on his life. Seemingly smitten with Nine Sisters raw power and overall competence in a fight, Vader selected her and a handful of other Inquisitors to join him on a mission to Moncala. The king of the aquatic world had been stubbornly refusing to participate with the Emperor in a trade agreement, but Emperor Palpatine and Vader suspected it wasn't merely the king's own anti-imperial philosophy that caused the divide, but a secret Jedi advisor that was whispering into the Moncala monarch's ear. During the mission, the exiled Jedi known as Farron Bar confronted the Inquisitors and their accompanying group of clone troopers. In a cunning move, Bar coldly pronounced Order 66 into the air, and the clone troopers turned to fire on the Ninth Sister and her siblings. In order to get away, Sixth Brother cut through Tide's leg, leaving her wounded on the floor. Vulnerable into the wave of blaster fire, the troopers levied against them, but somehow she survived. Thanks to the Ninth Sister's assistance, Vader was able to track down the cell of hidden Jedi and purge them, but not before the Jedi achieved his desired effect. After witnessing the horrors that the Empire was willing to inflict on its enemies, the Mon Cala launched their merchant fleet into deep space, providing ships that would eventually become the backbone of the Rebellion Navy. After the conflict of Mon Cala, a short time passed, and then Ninth Sister and the rest of the Inquisitors were shipped off of Coruscant and onto a new base on Nur. Palpatine observed that the presence of the other dark side Jedi distracted his apprentice, Vader, who considered them a potential threat. From Nur, Ninth Sister continued her investigations, hunting down reports of strange, hooded heroes that defeated patrols of stormtroopers or strange old men who could move objects with their minds. By 14 BBY, her hunt brought her to Bracca, where she searched for a mysterious force user in the group of Junkers. Now, of course, this force user turned out to be Cal Kestis in the game Jedi Fallen Order, the student of a rare Lasat Jedi Master known as Jaro Tapal. Ninth Sister discovered Cal Kestis by butchering one of his fellow scrappers, but failed to capture the boy on Bracca. Later, after discovering Kestis was present on Kashyyyk, Ninth Sister took the opportunity to duel the young Jedi, and much to her surprise, even all of her might and brawn as a Dawutin didn't help her in this contest at all. And Cal, through a combination of superior dueling skills and force abilities, won the contest against Ninth Sister. This was a pretty hard duel in the game, I remember it. And that's where her tale ends. Her ultimate fate, and whether or not she survived her duel in the upper canopy of Kashyyyk, remains to be seen. Now, I think she's going to show up in the Kenobi show. I think she's a badass character. I would love to see her in Kenobi alongside Vader, and she definitely has a lot of history in Star Wars now, you know, with Cal Kestis, with the Jedi, and with Darth Vader as well, especially with Vader. So I think it would be really fun to see her and where she's at, and maybe she can mention what happened after she fought Cal and, well, fell. Hope you enjoyed this rundown of the Ninth Sister. Let me know what you want to see of her in the future of Star Wars. Do you want her to be in the Kenobi show? Or do you want to just see her in comics? Or is she gone for good? Is she done? Thanks for watching this video. Catch you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.